Hello and welcome back to Open Mic Clam Man. Or sorry, Clam Man Two. Open Mic. This is the prologue to that game, and uh, it was a lot longer than I expected. So this is part two. If you haven't seen the last video, go check it out. We just got into our apartment from the comedy club, and uh, so yeah, we're gonna continue. Here we go. So a few quests I did not look at. Okay, so food for plants. You promise your plants some food. Get your plants some food. This is a rock science. You don't know that. Linda's got a theory going and she's hoping you can help her out. You promise to help Linda find a level one and level five on her so-called MES scale. Find them, interview them, and report back to her. You told Linda to do research on her own on the internet. It might work, but it's going to take a lot of time. Check back with her another day. Some artisan miniature sandbags. Nothing more than overpriced tiny rock cloth containers. Uh, we just got done talking to our plant about food. Otherwise, you could talk to a plant, but apparently you can. It's our apartment. I'm guessing the food might be in the kitchen. Empty chairs and empty tables. No time for dishes. Where to live by? I don't like dishes. Look at the bills. Fills so you with an existential dread. Maybe a career change wasn't the best move right now. Listen. Listen. This is stuff. God, God. You swing the door open, the light clicks, and the content of the fridge is illuminated by what seems like a spotlight. There's food in here. I'm not ready to unfridge anything yet. I'll come back later. What are you offering, fridge? All right, what does a houseplant eat? A houseplant does nothing all day, every day. It just sits there, contributing nothing. You'd think with that logic, it would know not to not ask for much. I just wanted to give it a choice. Well, maybe start by having a look at what's in there. Then you can ponder what is and what isn't suited to the palate of a plant. What are you offering, Fridge? There's tomatoes, milk, bread, and cold cuts. A bunch of empty jars and packages. I don't feel like you would want a tomato. Isn't like cannibalism? Or would a plant like bread? What about some milk? It's some milk. We shot the milk, but your hand is stopped by a halberd with a white flag tied to it. You want no part of this. Be on your way. What the heck is going on in this fridge? Listen, the speaker is a glass bottle of 2% milk. We're done explaining ourselves. We're not meddling in the affairs of the fridge anymore. We're neutral now. 2% cross his arms. And that's that. All right, I'm going to need more details. We're the democracy of dairy. There are many factions in the fridge, and for long have we maintained the union and coexistence in the fridge. This because we have any place in the door shelves. The gate to the outside. An old dry wedge of Parmesan pipes up, but we're done with all that now. Bunch of children, crybabies, pathetic. 2% clears his throat and explains. The factions of the fridge are constantly bickering. There's no use trying to mediate a peace if there is no will for it. We declared ourselves neutral. We refuse to take any part of it. And now the other factions have finally agreed to an assembly and to expect us to just come in to happily mediate. The nerve, I tell you, well, they can all saw it off. We're staying out of it. Let's try convincing the judge to participate in the meeting. Wow. I see your argument, but still, you're part of this fridge, are you not? No scoffs. So what? You're part of this ecosystem, whether you like it or not. No food is an island in and of itself, but part of the fridge. The vegetables should fail, fall, the milk is the lesser for it. You all share the fridge, and now you're just turning away from your tradition, years of cooperation, just because it got difficult, toughen up. I'm going to go with the first one. Dairy products shuffle around, avoiding eye contact. Well, that's 2%. They're making it awfully difficult for us. It's not that we don't want to help. It's just become impossible. Then I'll be by your side. I want the best for this fridge, too. The 2% convenes with its people and the rest turns to you. You speak honestly and with great distinction, Seafood. You will partake in the meeting. Thank you for helping us see reason. The meeting will begin very soon. Are you accompany us to it? Let's do it. Let's mediate. You make your way towards the meeting. A union of clam and milk. Gross. The air is crisp and cold, as usually is in the fridge. When the factions assemble, it's tense and unconsciously silent. All right, this is it. Your debut as a mediator. Do you feel prepared? As prepared as will ever be. We can give up, you know. We can just go. Scrap the neat and leave. Never come back. I like that option. Let's do that. We've come this far already. It's too late to turn back. Let's go. All right, let's do this. Factions gather in a half circle, divided in three groups. The coalition of loaves, the anarchist cold cuts, and the tomato communities. Speakers have been elected to represent each, and they've gathered at the very front. 
Democracy of Derry arrives late, but with conviction. They greet you, quietly and respectfully, as they join the assembly. All eyes are on you, the clan man. He was to the fridge, but gather here today to discuss the fate of the land. Looks are exchanged. Some nod. In the back, a particularly loud dinner roll shouts. We know! They know. Get on with it. Alright, let's get started. Who wants to go first? The foremost slice steps forward. I represent the Coalition of Loaves. We would like to make our case. This place, this fridge, that the foremost slice clears his throat, is a torture chamber. It is a prison of death, and it must not contain us any longer. For the greater good, we propose to hurl ourselves towards the door, the gateway to the great beyond, to open it once and for all. Only then can our people truly live. You said once and for all, there's no way you can just close it after you've left. I'll just take you out of the fridge and close the door after you. It's not that simple. Our exodus will be joyous, but short-lived, knowing the fate that once befell us will befall our children's successors. No, the oppression of the fridge must be ended once and for all. The Elder Tomato speaks up. Opening the fridge will be the end of us all. You're sending it to a slow death if you open that door. A death, perhaps, but a true life until then. None of this agony, this submission. Allow the interruption. For your kind, perhaps, our people have learned to embrace this world along with its hardships. One of the slices in the back angrily interjects. They're calling us lazy, they're calling us weak. Name calling and the hurling of abuse between vegetable and gluten ensues. Dairy products look among themselves as if they're ready to intervene. You shouldn't have let that happen. You're supposed to mediate this. The excitement cools after a minute, and the foremost slice, frustrated and disappointed, steps away from the conversation. Between the rest of the loaf, the coalition has spoken. You're up. The next speaker may take the stand. The elder tomato, resting heavy on his crane, makes his way to the stand. My friends, he begins. We all share the same world, and this is the world as we know it. It may be cold, maybe at times be dark, but it is the world we were given. It is not us to us to make these drastic changes. Another day comes, another passes. So my hair was bugging the crap out of me. Hopefully it's better now. You're blind, old man, the cold cuts say. The suppressada shouts. You've been in here too long. You've been blinded by the status quo, and now you mistake it for light at the end of a dark tunnel. Allow the cold cuts to interrupt. Let's go. A grin and a nod. You're enslaving your people with these tired ideas of society, old man. You're a has-been. Your time is over. Voice is celebrated among the slightest meats. It's the time for rock and roll. Protein power. Order, please. We haven't heard from all the tomatoes yet. The elder tomato flashes you a grateful smile and continues. We, the tomato community, are willing to help the coalition any way we can. He looks over towards the cold cuts. Your people, too, are friends of the tomatoes. If you will have us, we propose strength and unity among our peoples. But a closed door. A furious yell makes its way from the back. You are killing us! The suppressata steps up and steps in front of the elder tomato. Not a scoff. There's almost a tinge of pity this time. We're all for peace, love, and understanding, but we won't ally with someone who refuses to see the world as it is. We ain't playing your game anymore, old man. They're up to something. Figure out what. Natural 20, wow, look at that, dude. There's nothing revolutionary in the look of the suppressata, something unreliable, as if nothing of this matters, as if the game has been rigged, you suddenly notice movement in the corner of your eye. On a distant shelf, you notice what looks like a cracked team of smoked ham making its way to the thermostat on the upper shelves. They're, they're planning explosives. Take cover! The foremost slice torn towards the cold cuts you. What have you done? The bottle of 2% gas. They're finally doing it. We thought it was all empty threats. Trains of terror. Many of them in the voice of children rupture the red crowd. The other tomato mouth. May God have mercy on us all. The meats realize their plan has been covered, but their only response is cheer. This is it, baby. The revolution is here. Challenge the Supersada's authority. Sure, what do you say? Now, wait just a diddly darn minute. There's got to be another way to settle this. Supersada maintains his composure regarding his history. What do you propose? A guitar duel, you and me. Laughter. Vicious mocking laughter. I accept it. Have at it, brother. A slice of pastrami or else you a flying V guitar plugged in, distorted, and ready to go. Play the greatest guitar solo of all time. Yeah! Just barely. Look at that. Wow! Just enough. 
Your fingertips plant themselves confidently on the 12th fret. A quick pick and bend as you launch into your solo. Play a crescendo of modal scales and fire off some three finger tapping. You are shredding. As you finish your solo, the cold cuts along with the rest of the fridge or at all. This prasada hasn't even played yet. Uncertainty spreads through the high protein ranks of cold cuts. The prasada for the first time, seems to lose its composure. Brothers, don't yourself be swayed. This is the man. This is who we're up against. The response among the sliced meats is appropriately cold. Give up. It's over. Never! I ain't going down like this. The revolution never dies. Those words as Prasada hurls itself over the edge of the shelf, landing on the ground with a splat. Collect yourself and inspect the sliced meat on the ground. It's already got dirt on it. Old crumbs and dust. Uh, gross. Must serving that. Good call. Guess that's it for the Suprasada. The revolution is over. The commotion settles as the faction speakers convene in the center of it all. The dairy is busy conversing and finding solutions and differing opinions between concerned faction members. There's a lot to do, but they're convicted and proud in their mission. A former glory restored. The elder tomato was the first week. We're in debt to you, my dear friend. You brought us together. Nice for most sliced. We are grateful, truly. This is not what I expect when you open the fridge. Don't me smiles. I can imagine. So, how can I pay you? It's kind of awkward to ask now, but I need some food. That man looks worried. If you truly need food, we cannot stop you. We had no authority, physically nor moral, to refuse you. In the crowd, slice of smoked ham approaches. If you allow it, brother, I would like to offer myself. It's the least I can do for my people. I can't accept. Drug bonds for your whole faction. Fridge dwellers grow silent with respect. Out of the kindness of your hearts, you abandon your quest for food. I say nothing. Just walk away like a cowboy in the sunset. A proverbial sun sets, and as you close the fridge, you reflect on the past ten minutes. You've left your fridge in a better place than you found it, and that has made all the difference. You have nothing to show for but your clean conscience. Guess you'll have to get back to the hospital. House plant empty-handed. See you, fridge cowboy. Man, that was a ride. <laughs> what the? I was not expecting that when I opened the fridge. Ah, uh, your McGreston boy poster. Your most valuable possession. Cost you 23 bucks. You open the fridge again? Just staring at the fridge again. Inside society is being rebuilt. One of compassion, unity, and understanding. Go on. You feel so proud as a treat. Let them be. Give them time and space to rebuild. Fair enough. Note self. Stop writing pointless notes. Makes sense. The plant looks at you. Seems to be suspicious of your presence. Back again, are you? About that food. Funny story, actually. Things didn't really work out. And what is that supposed to be? Listen, man, I don't have anything for you. I'll have to do without. The plant makes its tendrils and mutters a couple expletives to itself. Can't seem surprised. Psh, thanks, I guess. Hang on a minute. Wait, hold up. There might be something in here we can use. Something funny. For a joke? Exactly, there's a joke in here somewhere. I have over the fridge, even though they know there's nothing in there. What about the fact that I'm intimidated by my own house plants? To my own house plants. I like the third one. That could be fun. Sounds like a self-awareness kind of joke. Are we going with that? Perfect. Guy number three, everything scares me. Nothing in here? Okay. Hey, how's this field research going? No way. I, I just wanted to leave. Yeah, trucker. The large truck has one of its hinge hind legs, well, wheels, on the sidewalk. A half-assed attempt at backing up the from the truck just down the street. Hey, you got a sec? Can you help me out? It's landlocked emotionless as this impatient helmsman signals you over. What do you need? See that guy? He points at the blue truck down the road. That asshat over there has been sitting on his ramp doing nothing but scrolling on his phone. I need him to move. I've got a cargo to haul. You want me to make a move? Yes, I'm very aware that I'm at the end of my rope. The guy won't listen to me. Not like I can leave my truck long enough to convince him either. What's in it for me? Drones looks around as if literally search for something in return. Eventually his eyes settle on his truck. Fuck, do you like butter? Butter's great. Look, I'll give you some butter. Just do it, alright? Sure, I'm gonna need half that butter right now and half when the job is done. No dice. You're getting the full amount of butter upon completion of the job. Times $20. Wait, what the fuck am I talking about? Listen. <laughs> you know they've got a truck. 
<laughs> oh, it's funny. Sure, I'll help you out. Great, get to it. The shipment is already late. I don't care how you do it. Just make a move. I need to get back on the road. I'll come here hauling butter. I don't know. I don't care. I just saw. She'll get not hauling man instead. Way more versatile. I don't know what that means. And I don't care. Not care any less. Please stop talking. How's she going? Fine. Good idea. Then get to work. I'm letting me do the same. Well, it's kelp. Can't be helped. Two curious live balls are following you, making your way up and down the street. When you stop and turn towards her, the girl in the window bobs down for a second and pops up with a big smile. Hi. Hello there. She passes you a shy wave with her left hand. My name is Nia Rika. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a really nice name. You can call me Nia, too. I won't tell. Sure thing, Nia. What's your kind of food? Um, garlic and rinsing sand for plain is quite a taste. Interesting. Uh, I like pizza. I like that too. I like butter chicken too. I like it the way the restaurant that makes it. Suddenly she's distracted by something inside the apartment. All you hear are faint, tiny noises of people speaking. Probably a TV. Niharika remains frozen for a second, zoned out with a blank expression. Eventually she turns back to you, pressing your lower face against the windowsill. What you doing? I'm talking to you, silly. Whoops, sorry, it was a stupid question. I'm sure, Niha, it's all right. Now. Oh. Oh no! It was so close. Freedom question. But live and learn. Be better next time. Nia looks even sadder now. Doesn't even look at you. Yes, sir. I feel awful. What? Is this your first time being rude to children? It is? Then how come you're so good at it? That's all right, Nia. Nia nods again, but she's looking a little less guilty now. Wow, great job. Sounds like Nia Rika's run out of things to ask you. She turns towards the sound of something coming from the apartment again, but she's not as mesmerized this time. You notice that between glances over the street, the TV, and the apartment, she keeps looking down at something between her and the window. What are you looking at? What have you got there, Nia? She looks down and turns to soldier to the side. It's a letter. Did you write the letter, Nia? Another nod. What's it for, Nia? Letter from my dad. He lives in a fancy house, but it's really far away, and I can't go out very far. You can't go out? How come? I can get sick really easily. That's why I stay inside. Aren't you going to put in the mail? She ducks down below the window again. I can't. I can't go outside. I'm not allowed to. Well, I can put the letter in for you. Her jaw drops. Her short says, Really? Can you do that? Thank you, sir. She lifts the letter over the windowsill and hands it to you. There's a mailbox behind, across the street. Behind you, sir. You got it, Nia. I'll be back in a minute. She goes, Joy. Yay, thank you. Okay, where's the, where's the mailbox? Oh, right there. You step in front of the mailbox and the letter hatch opens up. You hear coughing as dirt and dust settles. Uh, no. No, this mailbox is closed today. Have a nice day. Literally a child can see this. You're not closed at all. You're a dude. I swear a mailbox, not a dude. You're as much of a mailbox as I am. Th then you're a mailbox. Am I? No, you're a dude. And so is he. The man in the box groans. Uh, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm a dude, not a mailbox. My name is Deb. I'm the Hirik Ni Niharaki Ni Niharika's father. Listen, I saw you were talking to Niharika. That's her letter, isn't it? Are you spying on us? Not spying. Just keeping an eye on my daughter. He she wants at you. Her mother wouldn't let her mail it, right? And you asked me to mail it, so that's what I'm doing. All right, I'm willing to bet that's it. He sighs, and I get it. Okay, look, I can can't let you send a letter. Bring it back to her, right? Tell her the post is closed or something. It's for you, though. Please, man, I'm begging you. Just give her back the letter and walk away. All right, I'm going to need an explanation. It's hard to tell through the mailbox, but he looks like he's rubbing his temples. Look, you're not an idiot. I'm sure you understand what's going on here. Well, yeah, she don't want the letter to be mailed because something's wrong with the address. Besides, bingo. Me and Nihareke, Ni Nihare, I don't know how you say that name. Nia's father, mother, obviously don't live together anymore. We're not together in any shape or form. Nia's mom doesn't really like me that much anymore. There's some baggage there. Oh, uh, long story short, I may or may not have given them a fake address and told them I work at a really prestigious job. The address and letter doesn't exist. There, that's the whole story. Now, you please turn it to her. So you're lying to your daughter and you have to, to prove you're not a loser? I get the irony. You need to spell it out. Is it that enough? What more do I need to say? Again, when I just, why can't you just take the letter? Because I can't be here all the time, man. Sure, I get it now, but what if she sends one I don't intercept it? 
So you'd rather never respond than just now and then? Look at his temper. When I've sorted things out, I write her a letter with the real address. What kind of rinky dink logic is this? It's just how things are. It's difficult to explain. He groans, closing his eyes. Not good at it. I accept that. Tell me about Nia's mother. Her name is Janya. She was always a survivor in the family. Had a job when I didn't. You were a stay at home dad? Yeah, pretty much. I'd like to think I was good at it, but you know. At any rate, I'm aware that I'm not a great stay away from home dad. He looks around, gesturing as well as he can. This is all temporary. Right as he finishes his sentence, a salvo of jellyfish droppings splats on the top of the box. You don't have a job? I don't. Not right now. I just don't want them to know that. I'll catch up. I'll get back up on my feet and land a great job. It's just to delay truth. What does Janya do? She works for the government. She's good at what she does, and her hours reflect that. It's trickier now that I'm not around. Nia spends a lot more time alone, and she shouldn't. Anyway, enough about her. Well, what do you want me to say? Anything for a job? Yeah, getting back to my roots. I designed bike racks. She can't understand why you're unemployed. Laugh it up. It's a legitimate profession. It's not like I'm peddling drugs or selling sandbags. So my master's in technical engineering specializing in bikes and racks. And then I drew some really nice racks. Fantastico. Not sure why I asked. All right, I've heard enough. Okay, if you say anything, hear me out. I guess you don't want to take the letter back, and I don't want to admit it, but it's probably better like that. Besides, I wouldn't know how to explain that way. Here's an idea. Give her this one. It was a slip of paper with some text on it. You see, I just a P.O. box I have. She gets a way to reach me, and I don't have to embarrass myself by letting her and Janya know where I'm staying now. Sound good to you? You should be honest with her. Give her your real address. Come on, man. I can't. He isn't a bad father. He didn't used to be anyway. Maybe make him remember that. She holds you in very high regard, Dev. Don't let her start believing that her love and faith in you is misplaced. Dev doesn't respond. Not immediately. Takes off his glasses, wipes him clean. Rests his face in the palm for a moment and then speaks up. All right. Inside the mailbox, Dev fiddles around searching for something. Let's see, he stops to scribble something on a strap of paper. He reaches up and hands it to you through a slit. Here. Look at the address. He lives in a homeless shelter. I'm not going to ask him about it. He did the right thing. He groans, almost laughing. Man, I really hope so. I really, really hope so. Nia greets you with an expected smile. Hello, sir. Did you manage to post my letter yet? When's the last time you saw your dad, Nia? She replies in a flash. When I was five years old, on my birthday. I didn't see him for a long time, but I got a big hug on a toy plane. I'm going to be an astron astronaut in space and fly a plane. What about before that? When was the last time you saw your dad? She looks at the floor, holding her hands together. I don't know. Maybe when I was a little baby. I'm a lot older now. When I was a baby, dad lived in our house, and a realization hit her. Oh, no. We forgot about the letter. We got so distracted. I forgot, did you put it in the post yet? Slight problem with your letter, Nia. Oh no, did you drop it? There's an issue with the address. W what's wrong with it? Did I spell it wrong? No, that address doesn't actually exist. What do you mean, sir? I lied to you about where he lives, Nia. She pauses and she thinks over. So where does he live? I lo looked into and found his real address. Oh, okay. I may have that address, sir. Of course, Nia. Yay, she bounced up and down to view until she both faces. Oh, could you please write the address? Could you please write it on the letter? She ducks down again while waiting for a response. She must feel like she's been asking a lot of you. Of course, Nia. Nathan will smile. Oh, good. Thank you, sir. Dev seems nervous to turn the letter. How would it go? She's a great kid. Yeah, yeah, she is. I know this is weird for you, but I just want to say I appreciate it. And putting it off for so long, thanks for the wake-up call. Good luck, Dev. Thanks, man. I owe you one. Oh, boy. Well, this was fun. Sigh. Yep. Anyway, maybe you can learn something about this. Yeah, making jokes helps me cope with the world and stuff like this. Right on, Chief. My thoughts exactly. You know what? Let's not overcomplicate things. I'm gonna go about crushing the dreams of children, aren't I? Exactly. You got number five, being honest to kids. Okay, well, uh, that'll be it for this one. I'll probably finish in the next episode, I'm sure. But uh, if you like what you saw, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, comment below. Uh, share the video, whatever, you know, all the algorithmic stuff, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. And as always, stay blessed, my friends. Bye.